everyone, and welcome back to Microsoft Access 2016 Basics. My name is Steve Bishop, and in this video, we're going to take a look at many-to-many -many relationships. So let's say that we have three different people that we're tracking in our database, and we also want to track the addresses for these individuals, places like their school, their home, and their office. Well, it may be that the relationship between those different addresses could be a pretty complex arrangement where perhaps two or more individuals go to the same office or one individual has just one home address. So we could say that there are many people that go to one of these addresses, but there are also many addresses that a person might go to. This is what's called a many-to-many -many relationship. Many people go to many places. Let's go into our Access database and set up one of these many-to-many -many relationships. So I'd like to track the phone numbers for the individuals in our database. And since a phone number is really a different entity from the people, I'm going to need to make a new table for phone numbers. So let's go up to the Create tab, and we'll select Table Design. And of course, the first thing that I need to do is add an ID field. So we'll go ahead and add ID. This is going to be an auto numbered field. And we need to make it the primary key of the table. So let's go ahead and click on the primary key button here under the design tab. Now we just need to add some information about these phone numbers. So we'll just go ahead and say phone number. And that's fine to leave it a short text of 255 for now. We might change that a little bit later. And let's go ahead and save this by right clicking on the table one tab and we'll select the Save option. And we need to give our table a name. And again, I like to use the plural of the name. So we're gonna do phone numbers. Now let's go back to our people table. So one of the ways that we can ascribe each of the different types of phones to the different people is to make a special column, a special foreign key column on this people table. So for example, for here, I might say that this is a number, of course, because this is going to contain the foreign key to that phone number. And we might call this something like home phone ID. And then if we wanted to track their office number, then we would make another column here that would contain a foreign key value. So it would be office phone ID. And then we might make another one here that might be their, uh, their fax number. So maybe it's fax number ID or something like that. You can see this is becoming uh, quite large. We have three different columns for each of the three different kinds of phones. So this is really less than ideal, especially when you start thinking, well, do I necessarily have a fax number for every one of these individuals? Well, probably not. And maybe if they're just business related, I would only have their office phone number and I wouldn't have their phone number for them. So this isn't really the right way to do things because I'm going to have a lot of empty cells, a lot of pieces missing in this table. So let me go ahead and delete these three columns that I made because they're really not important. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another table that describes the relationship between the people and the phone numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and make another table. I'm going to go up to the Create tab, Table Design. And this table is going to contain the foreign key values for the people and their related phone number ID value. So we only need two fields in this table. It's going to be the person ID and the phone number ID. We need to change both of these data types to number because they are containing a number that relates to the primary key of the respective tables. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that both of these fields combined make up a primary key of this table. So I need to go back into the design tab here. And with both of these columns selected, I'm going to click on the primary key button. And you'll see we get the key icon next to both fields. Now, the reason this works is because no two records will contain the same value for both of these fields. 
And if you think carefully about that, it makes sense. I would never have a person with the same phone number ID twice as describing the relationship between that person and a phone number. And let's go ahead and save this table. And I'm going to name it people underscore phone numbers. Now this is a naming convention I like to follow. You might find other conventions to follow, but this helps me identify that this table is a joining table between the people table and the phone numbers tables. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now if we want to assign a phone number to a person, the process is fairly straightforward. We just go to the phone numbers table. Let me go ahead and open this up in the, uh, the data sheet view here so we can add some values. And of course, ID will auto populate, so we don't need to worry about that. And let's create our first value, which will just be 555. 555, 5555. And the second one is going to be 555. Actually, we'll do 565. 565, 5656. Okay? Now we just added phone numbers. We haven't represented who these numbers belong to just yet. And the way that we set up the relationship between the phone number and the people is to go to the people underscore phone numbers table. And of course, go to the data sheet view here. And we just need to say, what is the ID of the person and the ID of the phone number? Let me just expand this out so you can see, I want the phone number ID and the person ID. So let's say that I, who I am ID of one, I am going to share an office number with John. So both uh, I and John both have the same office number. So let's go ahead and go back to the phone numbers. And we're going to say person ID of one. And we'll say that the office number is the, that second number. Okay, it's the 565, 565, 5656. So it's the second phone number. And then for John, who is ID five, he will share the same phone number. So we'll say person ID of five has the phone number ID of two. So now we both are assigned to the same phone number. And we can continue this process for Shane, Denise, and, jo and Joyce, as well as perhaps John. So let's say that John shares the same number with uh, Denise. So we'll say Denise, who is person ID three, shares that phone number one. And John, who is ID five, contains also, or has that same phone number of ID one. So now, we can see a many-to-many -many relationship. John has more than one phone number assigned to him. He has both the office number and the home number. And then for me, I am sharing the same office number with John. And therefore, we have a many-to-many -many relationship. Many people sharing the same number, but the same number might have many people assigned to it. Okay, so there's one other thing that I would like to address. And that is, we don't really know what kind of phone numbers these are. Remember, when I, I tried to add the different columns here to my people table, I was describing what kind of phone number they were. I was saying home number, work number, fax number, that sort of thing. So how do we track what kind of phone number it is? Well, we actually already know how to do that using a one-to-many relationship. All I need to do is create another table Let's go to the table designer. Again, we're going to add an ID field. This is going to be an auto numbered. It's our primary key, so we click on the primary key button. And what this table is going to contain is the different kinds of phones. So we're going to say phone type. And we'll just keep it a short text at 255. That's fine for now. Let's go ahead and save this table. We'll call it phone types. Again, the plural of the word phone type. And now we can go back to our phone numbers table and we can add a column that's going to be the foreign key that references that particular phone type. So let's go ahead and add another column here. We'll call it a number field. This is going to be the phone type ID. 
Now we need to add some phone types. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go into the data sheet view of phone types and we'll say the first phone type is a home phone type. The second one we'll call our work phone type. And we'll say cell phone would be a third type and maybe we'll add a fax line here too. And if there's any other kind of phone numbers that we come across, we can go ahead and add them to the phone types table. So now we just go back to the phone numbers here. And we identified that ID1 was going to be a work number. So we know that that is, if we go back to our phone types, the work ID is 2. So we just need to say that the phone type ID here for 555-5555 is 2. And then we also said that the home number for both John and Denise was this number 565-565-5656. So that's going to be phone type ID of one. So now we have our relationship set up between our people, our phone numbers, and the phone types. And we did this all with our one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships. Now there's one last thing that I need to do, and that is I need to set up the referential integrity between all of these new tables. So let's go back to our database tools, go to our relationships, and let's add those tables. Again, I just need to drag and drop the primary keys onto the foreign keys of the related tables. And for this one, I'm going to enforce referential integrity between the phone type and the phone numbers by just only updating those related fields. So if the ID of a phone type changes, I also want it to change the value for phone type ID field on my phone numbers table. But I don't want to delete those related records. I probably want to go ahead and keep those phone numbers. So let's go ahead and cre create that. Oh, it looks like I can't access it because the phone numbers is already in use by another process. So I need to cancel out of this just for a moment and I need to close all these other tables so that I can do this. Go ahead and save our changes wherever, need it, uh, wherever it's needed. And let's try that drag and drop again. So we'll do phone types ID to the phone type ID foreign key field, enforce referential integrity, Cascade update related fields and create. And we can see our one to many relationship design there. Now I'm going to drop the primary key for our phone numbers onto the phone number ID field on our people underscore phone numbers table. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that uh, I'm gonna enforce the refer referential integrity between my phone numbers table. And if I delete a phone number, then I probably need to go ahead and remove the record from our people underscore phone numbers table as well. So let's go ahead and update and delete if we decide to delete a phone number. And then we need to do the same thing between our people and our people phone numbers table. So we'll drag that primary key over and drop it onto the foreign key. And once again, I'm going to select both to update and delete because if I delete a person, I should probably also delete all of the related phone numbers. So go ahead and click create. And now I have my one to many relationship between all of these different tables, but the relationship between our people and phone numbers is actually a many to many relationship using a third table that we call a join table. Yeah.